Hello everyone. So welcome back. Uh, so in today's lecture, we will discuss uh, different types of decoding strategies. Okay. So if you remember, you know, uh, we have this encoder decoder model, right? So encoder decoder model. Uh, let's say the application is machine translation. Let's say English to Hindi. Input is English, right? And output is Hindi. So uh, at every state right of the lstm or let's say transformer we'll discuss later right we we will produce a distribution and from the distribution that the, the task is to choose the um, right the word which you want to essentially place at this at this position okay so there are different greedy strategies different uh, you know top case strategies that people came up with and today we will discuss some of the popular strategies let's look at the decoding strategy so in a as i mentioned in a sequence to sequence model where you know you are given a a, a prompt or whatever an input right and the input is c okay and that's the input to your encoder and to your decoder you have already generated things till t minus 1 Right. Let's say the input is I am going to school, going to school, and the output you have already generated me, right? Me. Okay. Then what's going to be my next word? So, so given the input C and the tokens I have generated so far, W sub less than t means whatever i have generated till t minus 1 okay what is going to be my word at the th time okay c is the input w uh, sub less than t are the tokens generated till now and we are interested in the current token so decoding is the process of choosing the next token to generate based on the probability distribution of what a vocabulary right of that language so now you know if we purely do this based on greedy let's say i choose the best probable word as my next token that will have certain disadvantage what would be the disadvantage the disadvantage would be this would mostly be deterministic and uh, uh, um, th th this would this would be not only deterministic but also uh, you know, uh, sometimes the quality may also be good because let's say the application is question answering. So for every question, you always want the same answer to be generated by the model. The quality would be good, but the problem would be diversity, right? You won't be able to produce words which are creative, which are diverse, right? Because you will end up producing only single word every time. It will not produce anything uh, any any new output tokens given a specific input right now of course for machine translation diversity is not important innovation is not important uh, but let's say your input is that you know um, write a write a poem about something right so you do not want the model to produce the same response every time okay you want the model to produce diverse responses so to make a balance between quality and diversity we need some strategy so we have discussed greedy decoding where as i mentioned the ta so so given the input when it generates the outputs let's say the input is i like pizza with lots of and uh, this is this is the probability distribution of our tokens and you see that the word cheese has the maximum probability so in greedy decoding you essentially choose the word cheese right for exhaustive decoding what you do for exhaustive decoding you let's say at the th time you produce all possible pro words that can come here meaning the vocabulary words and for every vocabulary word you see what would be the next vocabulary word right again a branch of size size mod phi so at every position 
you have mod v options right and how many words are there how many words you want to output you want to output n number of words right so you have mod v to the power n possible sequences which is not possible beam search we discussed in beam search what we do we choose you know a, a specific value of the of the beam size which is k for example and then uh, at every time you look at k most probable sequence and you and essentially you keep on pruning those which don't come within this k probable sequence and you 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 move on right so greedy exhaustive beam search three of them are uh, deterministic right there is no uh, stochasticity uh, you know associated with them because you know greedy you choose the best one which will always be the same uh, exhaustive you have all possible options and beam search also uh, you look at k uh, k beams right so deterministic versus stochastic strategies if you use greedy uh, or exhaustive or beam search right you would end up producing uh, accurate results but the uh, response will not be diverse so we'll discuss three strategies today top k top p uh, and temperature sampling okay so in uh, in random sampling what we do i mean the 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 worst case right so let's say uh, so we have this distribution p of w i given c c is the input what we do we randomly sample a word from the distribution okay and that's going to be my next word again next you so so at t you sample from the distribution uh, this would be w t at t plus 1 your input is uh c and till time t you have a distribution and you choose one randomly and you keep on going uh till you generate the end of sentence or you know the n number of tokens that you want to generate are all exhausted okay it is purely random and this is not a good strategy at all in case of top k sampling what you do you uh first this is this is a variation of random sampling right but with a with a bit difference here and there you choose the number of tokens value that you want to generate right and let's say the number is k that means you you will now play with this k tokens right what you do uh at th time right you have the distribution you uh, you choose top k highly probable tokens right and then you renormalize the probabilities of this k tokens right and then then now in the probability you have only k tokens right uh, not mod v number of tokens and from there you choose things randomly right so you are essentially doing random sampling within the top k tokens not mod v tokens okay let's look at example let's say uh k uh, k is 3 right so this is my total the entire probability distribution right you choose top 3 cheese toppings and pepperoni right and this is their probabilities and now this is your candidate probability these are your candidate probabilities now here now so now you renormalize this right so if you renormalize then for cheese this is going to be 0.35 plus 0.35 plus 0.2 plus 12 right for toppings this would be i mean you can do in this way or you can do in a in a sort max way right we which would be exponential of it would be part of this right uh, for topping this would be 0.2 by 0.35 plus 0.2 plus 0.12 and so on and so forth 
so once you do this renormalization right um, this is your resultant probability distribution okay now you choose things randomly from this distribution not from this right so you are restricted to k number of tokens now but you are doing random sampling so this is top k so the the problem with top k sampling is that uh, let's say you have a, a skewed distribution like this okay where top k words will encompass the probabilities of the top k words will encompass the entire probability mass right let's see in this case if you take this and this and this this will be more or less the entire probability right whereas so, and and if you have the distribution like this then top k makes sense whereas if you have a kind of uniform distribution like this if you fix the value of k as 3 or 4 right you will let's say k is 3 so you would end up choosing only three words for your candidates right and the remaining words are also equally likely because they also have similar probabilities so in this case top k doesn't make any sense okay so instead of fixing k which is the number of tokens that you want to you want to play with uh, if we can choose the uh, certain probability and you say that look my probability threshold is or cumulative probability threshold is 0 0.6 and i will start from highly probable word then the next one the next one and i will keep on adding you know the top probable uh, top probabilities and keep on choosing those corresponding words until unless the threshold is uh, met okay so now we have a threshold on the probability not the number of tokens okay and this is exactly top k sampling or nuclear sampling okay so you you choose top k vocabulary right which is the smallest set of tokens uh, such that this satisfies smallest set this is important let's take an example let's say uh, this is my actual distribution right and let's say some of the let's take some of the top probabilities right and these are the top probabilities if we choose cheese the cumulative probability would be 0.35 if you choose toppings after that this would be 0 0.35 plus 0 0.0 0.2 0 0.55 and so on and so forth right so let's say the p is 0.5 okay so it means the threshold is 0.5 it means that if i choose this and this the sum of the probability would cross 0.5 i will essentially uh, choose 0.35 and 0.2 right that would basically exhaust my total probability budget and then i do the same i'll take these two uh, words probabilities renormalize them and then do random sampling right so in this case cheese and toppings would be enough if we do random sampling if we do no, renormalization this is the renormalized probability and then we do uh, random sampling okay so the advantage here is that uh, uh, let's say you have a uniform distribution let's say the distribution the the, the probabilities look like this 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.1 0.1 right uh let's say 0 0.05 0 0.05 and so on and so forth right so in that case if the threshold is 0.5 you will end up choosing this 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 and maybe this because this is greater than 0 0.5 if it is greater than 0 0.5 then you choose this 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 and this if it is skewed like this then you end up choosing only two right so this is the beauty of top k sampling the remaining one is temperature sampling and this is very simple so in 
temperature sampling, we do not truncate the entire distribution. It's not like from the distribution I choose top 3 or top 4, whatever top 3. Here I use a new hyperparameter, which is the temperature parameter called tau. Right? And the hyperparameter, so this is my softmax probability of, uh, uh, based on which I, uh, I create the distribution and this is my softmax wind temperature, right? You see the temperature here, the actual logit by the uh, tau parameter, okay? Now, if tau is 1, then this is same as, uh, you know, the random softmax probability. If tau is low, 0.1 for example, you would end up, think about it, tau is low, that means this would be high, right? <coughs> Versus if tau is high, then this would be low, the exponent would be low. So if tau is low, you are kind of promoting more skewedness, right? So if tau is low, you would see a skewed distribution and then you can choose the top one or top two, whatever. If tau is high, it will be more of an uniform distribution. So, you can play with this temperature parameter tau and if you want to be deterministic, then you always choose the lower value of tau. If you want to be more stochastic, probabilistic, right, more variation, more diversity, right, you should choose high value of uh, tau, right, depending upon your application. This is a very important hyperparameter. Okay, so this is written here. If you want to be creative, your tau should be higher. If you want to be deterministic, tau should be lower. And this is tau is, tau equals to one is the regular softmax probability. That's it. So this is about decoding. Now this part is complete. Uh, in the next lecture, we'll move to the next part. Thank you.